Hello everyone, welcome to Off Limits. Our guest today is a very well-known research scientist, environmentalist, Dr. Ravi Chopra. His research has focused on the interactions between technology and society, environment and development. And he is very well known for the first citizen's report on the state of India's environment in 1982. And of course, his analysis of India's water requ requirements in the century. Uh, Dr. Chopra has spent five decades in the field of development and he has established several pioneering organizations. And these are extremely important because he's brought in the young people and the youth and involved them in issues which we feel are not being passed on through generations. So welcome to Off Limits, Dr. Chopra. It's such, so great to have you with us. Thank you. I have got you on board really to speak on this completely colossal disaster in the hills of in the mountains of Uttarakhand, Joshimat. Could it have been avoided? The first warning bell was sounded in 1976. The MC Mishra committee, which was appointed to look into the development of cracks on the roads in Joshimut pointed out that Joshimut was located on old landslide debris and therefore the soil did not have much load bearing capacity. They recommended that geological investigations be done so that safe and unsafe areas could be marked out and the unsafe areas no further construction be permitted uh, and in the safe areas, construction be limited. They also mentioned that there had been a lot of deforestation and that should be recovered through afforestation programs. And that the a very important suggestion was that the toe of the slope, uh, which dipped into the Dhali Ganga River on the northern side and the Alaknanda River on the western side, was prone to erosion by the rivers and therefore should be protected with protection walls and spurs. Now, thereafter, there have been a series of uh, scientific reports and warnings coming from scientists and different committees recommending that large infrastructural projects not be undertaken in this area. Uh, one of the uh, reports was the uh, 2014 uh, report that uh, put out by a Supreme Court uh, committee to investigate the impact of hydropower projects during the Kedarnath tragedy. I was heading that committee and a very important recommendation we made in that report was that the area north of the main central thrust, which is the most sensitive fault zone in the Himalayas. And Joshimut lies right at the edge of the northern edge of the fault, that the areas north of the main central thrust should not have any dams. The reason being that these are areas where in the geological past, the seeding glaciers have left behind millions of tons of debris, rocks, boulders, etc. And the small streams in this region, they come down very steep slopes. And in the case of a heavy rainfall or an extreme rainfall event, like in 2013, they have so much water and so much water, when it moves very fast, has a lot of kinetic energy and is capable of pushing everything in its way and causing destruction downstream. So we had recommended that no dam should be built in the uh, paraglacial zone. Had that suggestion been accepted, there would be no Tapovan Vishnu Ghat project uh, today. Okay. Similarly, 
in uh, 2020, the high powered committee um, investigate uh, to look into the Chardham Pari Yojana, uh, investigated a proposal from the border roads organization to build a bypass underneath uh, Joshima town along the base of the slope. Again, we pointed out that the Mishra committee had mentioned very sensitive part and uh, the townspeople were unhappy about it because they knew that if there's a bypass, they lose their economic livelihood. So uh, keeping all the concerns in mind, the committee had recommended that the traffic going to Badrinath should go through the town. The traffic returning from Badrinath may use the bypass, which should imply that the width of the bypass can be reduced and the rocks at that level don't have to be cut too much. We did go to the spot, we looked at the rocks, the rocks appeared strong, but we recommended that before any physical activity is done, there, there be more detailed geological, geophysical and geotechnical analysis. Uh, my, my sources in Joshima tell me that those have not been done and that instead the rock has been blasted uh, at that location. So these are the kinds of problems. And of course, you know, given the big push for tourism, Joshimath has developed very rapidly after Uttarakhand achieved statehood. Right. So there is, you know, this continuous uh, exploitation, we can say by building mafias, mining mafias in other parts, and etc. But eventually it is a political decision. And you find that government after government just like you pointed out, with so many reports coming in from environmentalists and experts, government after government always ignores it. And there have been so many disasters in Uttarakhand alone. Yes. In fact, in 2021, about 60 eminent scientists and experts wrote to the Prime Minister saying that these projects uh, near Joshimat should be dropped. But that was because, as you recall, this Tapovan Vishnu Ghat project, the barrage site was completely uh, destroyed, right? Uh, so had they listened to any of these reports, none of these disasters would have taken place. Now, why do they take place? The government has a certain approach to economic growth. And I no longer call it development. It is economic growth. And that approach is based on a concept of industrialization. And that is um, the approach that is used in the rest of the countries applied in the mountain states also. But the mountain, the, there is no consideration for the fragility of these areas. Okay. And... So it's a one-track mind, blinkers are on, and no exceptions are made. Absolutely. And you know, the, uh, what What we always think, and even the media doesn't write as much as it should, we talk about the disaster, but not the solutions, and the solutions that we ignored. Uh, but there is this continuous disrespect for our mountains, for the Himalayas, right? And that must be coming into every, you must be feeling that all the time, because you work so extensively there. You are right. I feel it. Uh, I experience it all the time. And I have experienced this total destruction of the natural environment in the mountains, even in Dehradun. In this town, in the last uh, year or more, uh, let's say from 2020, we have seen massive deforestation, cutting of trees, to build new Absolutely. and wider roads. And this is despite the citizens, very large citizens' protests. The right. government, in fact, doesn't even care to interact and to uh, dialogue with the citizens. So the greenery for which towns uh, in the mountains are famous for, that is disappearing quite rapidly. In fact, not just the towns, the entire state in the region. 
Yes, I mean, every visit like lay persons like us make to the hills, you find that there are more and more hills have been denuded. And that yeah. greenness, even of the Komao hills, which are always very green, has been impacted so badly. Yes. But, but why is this hesitancy? You know, you one would think that any government, you know, all, they all come with all kinds of promises. Of course, environment is never really a promise. Why is it that they do not take full-fledged opinion, holistic approach to uh, growth? I also won't use the word development in the hills. Why don't they do that? As I mean, I in say, your experience, why do you feel that? It's greed? Well, as I said, there is a certain conception of what is what will bring economic growth. It's a model based on industrialization that is being followed throughout the country. And the governments are insensitive to the fragility of the mountain regions. And it's not just the mountain regions in the Himalayas. You take the Western Ghats, and you might remember that about 20 odd years ago, there was a committee headed by Dr. Madhav Gargil to look at the approaches for sustainable development of the Western Ghats, right? Yes. And yes. they put out an excellent report, first rate report. What did the government, the central government do at that time? They appointed a lightweight group of people um, who, not all of whom knew much about the environment and asked them to review Madhav Gargil's report. I found that astonishing that anybody would dare to uh, review a report put together by Dr. Madhav Gargil and his committee members were outstanding uh, people who knew the area very well. Right. So it's just sheer uh, drive for growth. And the growth is, I would argue, is aimed at pleasing the growing middle class of this country, okay? Uh, the uh, after independence, if we take the first 25 years or so, we had a middle class, grow, small middle class that had itself come out of rural areas and poverty. And therefore, they were thinking in terms of what they had left behind. So their dreams, etc., were not that far removed from the rural areas uh, and their uh, the villages that they had come from. Today, you have a very large middle class in India. Okay, it's no less than the USA. And this uh, middle class has very little connect with either the poor or the rural areas. And therefore, they are sold on by the advertisers. They want more and more. They have this uh, what do we call that? Uh, they have disposable incomes and therefore they want wider roads and they want to fly off to the latest destination. And that's what brings uh, unsustainability in our areas. Right. So that also brings me to the point that, you know, uh, the politician doesn't have environment as a major issue in any election. Uh, you have all kinds of other issues which might be realized or not be realized, but even lip service to environment is not really made. Is this because uh, uh, one you've identified as the middle class and the other is, as the middle class often say, and you get these uh, writings in newspapers, that the poor, because they're so concerned with livelihood and daily earnings and feeding their uh, families, uh, that uh, environment really is not something that they can pay attention to and environment is really um, uh, for the uh, is a luxury for the well-off. It's an absolutely ridiculous idea. In the first citizen's report, Anil Agarwal had written very correctly that the lives of rural people depend heavily on their immediate environment. Their food comes from their uh, fields. 
The fodder for their animals come from the nearby forest, water comes from their well, and um, they have pastures for their domesticated animals. Now, anytime you introduce a change in any of these, their lives get affected, and which is why we have people streaming out of the rural areas into urban areas. If the rural areas were to be better developed, uh, you would not see this. Now I can give you no better example than Himachal Pradesh. The first chief minister of Himachal Pradesh, uh, Y.S. Parmar, was very sensitive to the need for rural development. And he encouraged researchers at the Horticulture Forestry University to come up with ideas which would promote income generation in the villages. And that's how the apple production of Himachal took off. Okay, Absolutely. even today, Himachal's urban population, which now things have changed, but even today, uh, Himachal's urban population is not more than 10 or 12 percent, whereas Uttarakhand is hitting about 30 percent. Okay, so that kind of sensitivity is very much there amongst the local people. So that, yeah. so, you know, when we are now to go back to Joshimat and there are now some morning reports that it's spreading and there will be many Joshimats, uh, are we too late or can we make changes which are long lasting at this stage as well in the hills that have been developed as it were? Yeah. Uh, first, let's take just Joshimat. Right. The Joshimat slope is sliding. And you've seen the uh, scientific reports that it's sliding at a faster rate in some parts than in others. Okay. Absolutely. Therefore, uh, the scientific investigations should be used very quickly uh, to delineate the safe and unsafe zones. People whose houses are unlivable, they have to be moved out into the safer zones or rehabilitated outside of the town if they are willing to uh, be rehabilitated uh, away from the town. Uh, so the, the need, there is still some time. There is possible of, uh, there is a possibility of having technical interventions in Joshimut to dewater the slope and ensure that it doesn't slide so much that these safer parts are well protected in the future, that construction is limited, and the carrying capacity of the town is, is uh, studied and respected. Okay? That's for Joshimut. Now, the same approach needs to be developed for this state, first of all. We really need to find out what is the ca carrying capacity of this uh, state. And then particularly look at the towns and cities because after statehood, people have started moving from rural areas to cities within Uttarakhand, unlike earlier times when they used to migrate out of Uttarakhand. So our cities and towns are growing very rapidly. And for all of them, we need to have carrying capacity studies. And then these studies have to be respected and further growth should be determined by the carrying capacity. Okay? So this kind of demolition that is being suggested and which is, you know, uh, making the people even more fearful, that is an immediate solution of any kind or is it just a panic reaction from by the government? Well... That in itself is hardly a solution. It is a step that may be necessary, and that's why the government is carrying it out. Okay. Um, also, it looks good, right? Um, that the government is doing something. Um, but there are many more critical issues. For example, the government has announced an immediate uh, relief of about one and a half lakh rupees per family. Now, if a family has to move away from its home and rent another place, this amount is going to be inadequate, okay? A very small uh, residence may cost them five to 6,000 rupees a month, okay? 
So uh, what needs to be done is that this advance payment needs to be enhanced as the local people are asking for. And they, uh, that amount can be deducted later from whatever is the final financial package per family, right? Uh, so I think that there is, uh, there is a need to move people out of the unsafe zone, but in a sensitive manner. Yeah, the human yeah. touch is missing. Yes, so right. So the people are saying, look, come discuss with us. Come talk to us. Officers are talking to officers. The chief minister, if I remember right, on his first visit, did interact with some of the local people. He visited their homes, etc. But on his second visit, he had just time for the officers. Now, if the people are given at the moment a higher financial relief, they may be able to restart their lives in the manner that they think is good for them. So it will relieve the pressure on the government itself uh, if it were to do so. Okay. Right. So we have the short term of relocation and enough compensation or money, not compensation really, yeah. money for them to be able to begin. And long term, uh, along the lines that you have suggested, which would mean crisis meetings, interactions and discussions with experts like you, and a plan of action, which takes in not the immediate term as well as the long term for this growth or development or whatever we want to call it, right? Yeah. Which is I not would, happening. My emphasis, is also my emphasis would be that the most important experts today uh, are right there in Joshimat. The people who've been watching things happen, who, you know, it's, I find this very uh, strange and um, in other situations, I would say funny. The government is trying to withhold information. Now, this is ridiculous because the people are seeing that more areas have developed cracks, that the cracks are getting longer, wider and deeper. Now, you can't... You can't uh, stop their panic if they are able to see this by just withholding some scientific data. Okay? Right. Right. So, uh, is Rose uh, gagging is something that is not really going to work, is it, in the long term? It might not inform you, uh, people like me, but the people who are really suffering it are going to be hit. Anyways. Yeah. The, I, I think, I think, if the local people are involved, <clears throat> they can help the government prepare a sustainable plan for future uh, growth of Joshimut. <clears throat> and the Joshimut city limits may have to be, town limits may have to be expanded, right? To If people don't want to move out of Joshimut, because it's a very important location. The road to two borders goes through Yoshimat, okay? And on top of that is the road to Badrinath. So Amazing, it's yeah. a very central location and people from surrounding villages, I would imagine something like 40 or 50 villages, they are daily suppliers to uh, the resources, daily resources required in Yoshimat, okay? Right. So a final question, Dr. Chopra, since you've been in the field for such a long time and you've handled so many other issues as well, and you you have interacted with the media, do you think that the media as it is today has let down the people, has let down the environmentalists, or do you think we've done enough to bring the real reasons to light? Or, we, or have we also obfuscated facts and not really gone into the real solutions and the real problems that have led to Joshimat? Well, <clears throat> obviously, Joshimat got so much attention only when it reached a crisis stage, right? Uh, when there have been all these reports and scientific papers, etc., that have been warning people uh, in the media that Look, we need a different type of development, okay? Uh, very often, the press conferences are very poorly attended. 
And even those who come, all they want is a bite. Okay. Absolutely. So the depth in reporting uh, is missing. There are very few uh, journalists and uh, media uh, owners who are willing to report in depth. I think that really comes from the earlier issue that environment is not an issue for the burgeoning middle class and it is thus not an issue for advertisers and the corporates and thus it is not an issue for the politician. Yes. So, right. Thank you so much, Dr. Chopra, for giving us this time. Thank you. Thank you very much.